As this apocalypse continues to drag on, we can probably all agree that the most important thing to have on you at all times, well, it's probably clothes, but a close second is water. And what better way to carry that water than in your own personal handcrafted leather costrel? I'm here for you. You can get all the patterns and artwork for my projects on my website, link in the description down below. I'll also put a link right here for you guys. You can also get the same patterns and artwork on the month they were released on my Patreon, so maybe check that out. And hey, if you wanna help support the channel even more, we now have channel memberships. Click on the join button to see if that interests you. Any support helps. Thanks for watching. This video is once again sponsored by Lonsdale Leather. Check out a link to their website in the description down below for all sorts of tools, supplies, and of course, leather. A quick note, this is five and a half ounce leather. Works perfect. Now if you mark your holes, but don't punch them, maybe just as a guide for a, like a five prong punch, then you can glue your two halves together and punch through everything at the same time. The difference being I wanted this to be as easy to hand stitch together as possible. My holes are a little bigger, the needle goes through easier, the thread gets pulled through easier. If you're using a pricking iron, chisel, etc., holes are a bit smaller, but people use those tools all the time to hand stitch stuff together, so it's really not a big deal. So when deciding how you're going to put this project together, think about the possibility of gluing your two halves together first and punching through everything at the same time. Now some of you may be worried about using glue in this project since you're drinking from the bottle. That's up to you if you don't want to use it. It's not 100% necessary, but it's going to make everything seal a little easier. Remember, you are going to be lining this whole bottle with beeswax inside out, permeating the whole bottle. So any chance of transferring this glue into somebody's body is so, like, minuscule that I personally wouldn't really worry about it. That's up to you to decide if you're worried about it or not. But you're coating the whole thing in wax and nobody's going to even touch the glue. Now, if I had decided to cut out both halves and punch both halves separately and then try and glue them together, there's a few problems. First of all, there's going to be glue in all the holes. Second of all, you may not line up those holes properly and you won't even be able to see the holes because the glue's in the way. So that's why I did it this way. Again, you can just punch through everything at once if you want, but this is how I did it. Um, you know, live and learn. Because I want to make sure all these stitches are nice and tight, you guys will see me just do a running stitch all the way down with one side sometimes and then do the other side. So I did it proper saddle stitching, looping each stitch as best I can on the cross and giving it a little tug, making sure it's nice and snug. This is a perfect opportunity to mention that I have been making shirts for a while now. The one I'm wearing here is one of my favorite. Go check it out on my website. In my head, I wanted everything secure before I sanded the edge, but because I stitched up and over the edge near the opening to the bottle, you can see things are misaligned a little bit there. Final product, you don't really notice, but I might have sanded everything first on the edge and then stitched it if I was to do this again. You could also just cut it off very carefully. When I've got a sander here, I might as well use it. I forgot to mark these holes earlier, but I did always plan on punching through these holes specifically, both at the same time when it was glued together. So I've got my large punch. I'm just going to wail through both layers. Moving on to beveling. Now we're going to get our piece extremely wet. Make sure you open up the inside, fill it with water, soak the outside, do everything you can to get as much water into there as possible, then empty it out, and then fill it with corn. You can use sand if you want. Corn's a little easier to deal with. Okay, corn is a lot easier to deal with. 
So then you just keep jamming corn in it and adding more corn until you've got the shape that you want. I'm going to do a quick adjustment on it. Just I didn't want it as round. I wanted it to have a little bit less of a profile. So I'm going to put it on the table, do a little squish. And then we're going to hook it up to dry. This is probably way over engineered. Just lean it against something and put a fan on it. It's really not that big a deal. So this is 24 hours later. Man, that's a lot of corn. Make sure you get all the excess corn out of there. You can use a double boiler if you want. I'm using a crock pot. Took a while to melt it down and maybe a couple of hours, but worked just fine. Now this is my beeswax only crock pot. So now you want to permeate the whole piece with wax. A couple things. First of all, if this piece wasn't completely dry, it may destroy it. So make sure it is completely dry. I waited 24 hours because I'm trying to get a video out. I might have waited an extra day just for the hell of it. Um, so 48 hours is a good safety, but use your own judgment. So you're going to fill the entire costrel with wax and let it sit for a bit so that it can soak into the inside. You're going to pour that out, make sure you do the whole outside of the costrel, then go back onto the inside of the costrel and do all the seams, pour it out, let it cool, do the seams, pour it out, let it cool, and repeat that process until you're happy with it. Heat gutting it specifically to melt the wax on the outside so I can wipe it off in case it's dried a bit. Another thing you should do, which I didn't really demonstrate here very well, is you should fill the bottom with wax, not a ton, but like more than just covering the seams, and let it sit upright to cool. And that way you make sure that you have some wax exactly where the highest chance of leaking is going to occur, the bottom with all that gravity and science happening. Um, at least that's what I'm calling it, gravity and science. What's not a lot? I don't know, like a an ounce. So I've tested it. It holds water. We're going to put a stopper on it. I picked up my stoppers at Home Depot, which is was kind of weird. I didn't think I would find cork stoppers at Home Depot. I'm going to heat up the top just so it shapes a little better when I put the cork in it. Now, don't leave your cork in it like this. Like, shape it and pull it out. Wait for it to cool and then put it back in. Because otherwise you're going to... Get your cork stuck in the bottle. Not that I, not that I ever did that at all. Um, yeah, right. Cork's pretty fragile. This whole concept I've got going on here may not work out in the end. Who knows? But it uh, looks cool. So there's that. Um, if you're gonna ask me how I tied that, it's really, it's just you know wrap some wax thread around it and tie a knot. It's not really anything spectacular. This hole is probably better punched before you wax it, but whatever. This will make sure I don't lose that cork anytime soon. All I do for the attachment here is two knots, one on either side of that hole to hold the end of that lanyard in place. Now I'm just doing a quick strap. I've decided to go with a buckled strap, half inch. I'm gonna rivet it together. You could hand stitch it, that might be cool. There will be two costral designs in the costral pack that I have on my website if you want to pick that up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps the channel out. You guys have no idea how much it does. 
subscribe for future videos, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my content. And until next time, keep on being creative in whatever it is you do.